so why don't you each uh, say your name, the name of your company, and a little bit of background about what you did before you got here. And then we'll dive in after that into companies and all kinds of cool topics. Um, I'm Kamakshi. I'm the founder of an early stage company called Lab Synthetic, funded by Tiny Perkins and Sakura. Uh, our company uh, uh, develops technologies for cross device advertising solutions with a focus in mobile advertising. Um, before I started this company, I was the lead scientist uh, at AdMob, the largest mobile ad network that was acquired by Google last year. Um, I spent uh, six months at Google as a part of the AdMob acquisition. Um, started this company October last year, and it's been an exciting ride since then so far. What did you do before AdMob? Um, I got my PhD in electrical engineering from Stanford uh, in a very mathematical discipline called information theory. So there were two routes for me, either go to Wall Street or uh, be a pawn, uh, or uh, think about exciting ideas in advertising, or be in academia. Um, I chose the second route. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jen Hyman. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Rent the Runway. And before Rent the Runway, I had had jobs in sales and marketing. So after graduating from Harvard undergrad, I did sales and marketing at Starwood Hotels for about four years and built a wedding business for them over the last three years that I was there. So became an in-house entrepreneur thinking about women and the emotional experiences that women had in their lives. I then went to a startup called WeddingChannel.com and I ran their sales team. And then after that I went to a company called IMG, which owns all the fashion weeks around the world and a modeling agency and I developed mobile and internet businesses for them for their fashion group. And then went to business school and had the idea for Rent the Runway there and it's actually our two year anniversary today of Rent the Runway. Hi, my name is Megan Gardner. I'm the CEO and founder of Plum District, and I have to apologize, I sound a little bit like Kermit the Frog, who's been smoking for 20 years. Um, but they, I just uh, took my first vacation with my husband to Cambodia last week, and I came back with a really fun flu. Um, so anyway, I apologize in advance for having to listen to me uh, tonight. But my background, I'm a recovering investment banker. I came out, of, I went to Smith College and spent five years on Wall Street. Um, I did take the second choice. Um, I went to Wall Street, um, learned a lot about finance while I was there and uh, focused mostly on tech companies. Uh, I then um, spent some time doing strategy and sales as well um, at a couple of different places, most recently Ameriprise, uh, which has been important to the uh, company that the, the structure of how we've actually put together our sales team. So I can talk a little bit more about that later. Um, I went to business school at Harvard and graduated in 2006. I spent some time in Central America working with the United Nations uh, and I always wanted to be an entrepreneur uh, since I was in high school and I'm just thrilled that I have the opportunity to work with uh, a really amazing crew of women and men but uh, a large chunk of women in the company. Hi, I'm Yuli Kim. I'm the Vice President of Product Management at One Kings Lane, which is the leader in the home category in flash sales. I attended Stanford where I did my undergrad and master's and have basically spent my entire career in the Valley. I've worked at two startups and then spent the last number of years at eBay before coming over to One Kings Lane uh, and spent most of my time in product management. Awesome. Thank you guys. And I apologize, I sort of didn't introduce myself. My name is Aileen. I'm a partner at a venture capital firm called Kleiner Perkins. And I focus mostly on uh, consumer and internet, but actually in the past two years I've been spending a lot of time on two things, e-commerce and also on companies that focus on women as the primary customer. Uh, and I'm really thrilled to be here because I actually, we get to work with all of these fantastic entrepreneurs at Kleiner Perkins and they just rock. Uh, so, um, getting to some questions. So each of you is, or your, and your companies and you are leaders in pretty new fields and new categories. I'd love, maybe we'll start with Yuli at the end, um, talk a little bit about the big insight that your company is founded on and whether you think it's part of a big trend or that's happening in technology and the consumer internet. Totally. So One King's Lane was founded around two years ago at the bottom of the recession and flash sales was a new phenomenon. 
and it was this perfect marriage where a lot of these home category brands and suppliers had excess inventory. At the same time, consumers were looking for really great deals because it was the sign of the times during the recession. And so what happened was we ha our co-founders of the company, Allison and Pincus, Allison Pincus and Susan Feldman launched One Kings Lane. And what they did was brought a new type of shopping experience to the home category where in the past, if you wanted to shop for something, then you would basically have an Amazon type of experience. You look for a TV and you go to Amazon and what's brought to you is practically every make and model in TVs available. Instead, what we do at One Kings Lane is our merchandisers scour the globe for the very best, unique, most beautiful product available from the best designers and suppliers in countries including places like India and Morocco and what we do is every day provide a special treasure hunt for our customers where they come at 8 a.m. and find what's special and new that we found out there for them. And so I think one of the very special things that we do is we've changed the model where now it's more about discovery shopping and it's about urgency and scarcity. So it's really a, a very different kind of momentum that goes on where people wait and see what's on sale that day and there's this rush coming in the door every day to grab it because it goes fast and there's actually not that much of it. And so it's, it's really fun and exciting for our customers. Thanks. Well, you, want, you want to go, Megan? Um, sure. So the question again was what was Big Insight? Yeah. Um, I think I alluded to this earlier around our sales team. So uh, we are the largest uh, deal site focused entirely on moms uh, in the United States. And the we have 270 moms sourcing our offers across the country. And it's uh, done through a 1099 contractor um, organization or structure. And what for us the Big Insight I think has been that uh, you can really become be more relevant if you make your salesperson your consumer and vice versa mm -hmm. and so we uh, you know we're in 26 different cities 57 local districts so micro districts and um, what's important is moms are only going to buy what's really what really matters to them and matters to their children and 85 percent of what they spend is within five miles of their house and so having an on-the-ground sales team is really important and so I think that's our big, it's not, it's not news that mom spend a lot of money. Uh, it's not big news that she runs everything. Um, as far as I'm concerned, she runs the world. But um, it's, I think, what people haven't done, and it's, this is new, is our sales force literally is the, a mom sales force. And we're leveraging um, the flexibility, and it's, it's working really well. Cool. So two key insights with Rent the Runway. The first is that consumption needs to be rationalized. So this was an insight I had with my sister when we were staring at her closet and she did not want to wear any of the dresses in her closet and she wanted to go out and buy something new. And I think that if any woman looks at her own closet, no matter if you're a J. Crew shopper or if you're a Neiman Marcus shopper, you can look at that closet and 50% of the stuff in it is stuff you've only worn once for a whole host of reasons. You might have gained weight, lost weight, you were a bridesmaid eight times, you bought a sparkly dress for New Year's you never wore again, and so on and so on. So just as Netflix rationalized the way we consume entertainment, I thought, oh, here's a great way to rationalize the way that we get dressed. I think the more important insight that came along slightly after that is that every woman deserves and wants to feel like Cinderella. Every woman wants to feel beautiful and self-confident. And we live in a culture of aspiration and a culture of consumption where I believe the whole world has been Kim Kardashianized and the typical young woman today knows about brands that she doesn't, she'll never be able to access, uh, she'll never be able to buy, and she believes that those brands actually deliver her a piece of her self-worth. So what we've seen from Rent the Runway is that when women rent the runway, they feel self-confident, they feel beautiful, they're aspiring to new brands that they wouldn't have otherwise been able to afford, and they therefore feel empowered. So, so much of the insight in Rent the Runway is it's quite an emotional experience, and that we're delivering the Cinderella experience to women around all of the special occasions in their life. Awesome. Thanks. Nice. So going from the Cinderella experience to technology. <laughs>
<laughs> so the insight of uh, my company is uh, based on um, the company that I, that I used to work before AdMob. Um, so most uh, mobile ad networks um, out there started at a time when uh, it used to be uh, a pre-smartphone, feature phone device dominated industry. Um, as a result of which, advertising um, was hinged um, on not being able to persistently cookie and understand user behavior. As a result of which, um, all kinds of targeting afforded to advertisers who are trying to reach uh, target consumers in mobile uh, was based on uh, deriving all kinds of proxies. So um, let's say someone like Brenda Runway wants to reach their target audience, you would define things like, I would like to buy ads on an iPhone device uh, that's running this kind of an OS version in this kind of a broad geographic region. That's hardly targeting anything that is relevant to the audience behind the ad request. So what we are developing a technology in mobile advertising is to define meaningful um, targeting criteria which are which enable advertisers and marketers to reach the audience that they truly desire and not develop all kinds of proxies um, that are currently afforded in most of the technology solutions around mobile advertising. Awesome, thank you. Now, three of you guys work on businesses that do have largely female customer bases. And some people may say, well, you know, women's business is a niche business. So how do you, usually, how do you respond to the comments like, you know, targeting women is niche? <laughs> I, can, I can take that one. Um, um, I, while I was raising my first round of funding before I met Aileen, I had a, a, a white male tell me that, actually, that, that, oh, well, it's so nice that it's a niche business, and how, do you, how is it really going to be a big opportunity? And I responded, I, I took a, uh, a deep breath, and I said, I don't think that um, the women that work for us and the fact that you know there are 85 million moms in the US um, that they uh, women represent over 50 percent of the population I'm not exactly sure where that became niche um, <laughs> so he was a little bit surprised um, and uh, I just I get I really I get upset when people say that and I respond pretty pretty uh, uh, exactly the way I just did now I just it's not a, it's not a niche it's a like like I said earlier um, women are really controlling everything and specifically um, in my in my category moms um, so I don't think it's a niche and uh, I think we have to we, we everyone in this room has to really educate the consumers as well as the folks that are financing I would say the same thing given the home category is uh, about a hundred and fifty billion dollar market not exactly niche <laughs> so I think that we're going after um, a pretty big addressable opportunity out there and for us, the getting dressed for special occasions in the U.S. alone, just women, it's $400 billion. I wanted to go and create this business for women first. There's a lot of ways to rationalize consumption around retail or around clothing, but I thought that women also have this emotional aspect that I brought up that could deliver an experience that took it beyond just price point. So. There's something more special about dressing a woman for her rehearsal dinner or her prom or her first date with the guy she's falling in love with. And I think that's where you build real brand loyalty. And I also think that women are the best sharers and women are the ones who influence men. So Rent the Runway is ultimately about democratizing luxury. And over time, we will rent you your high-performance ski gear and your cool vacation wear, and men will be able to rent the runway as well. But why not start with the most influential uh, base of users and customers who are going to be advocates and evangelists for this new form of consumption?